the most terrifying moments in the life of a web developer is when your deployed web app is on fire and you've got the fix, but you have to wait for it to deploy. Let me tell you, those can be super stressful minutes that can feel like years, and I've got the gray hairs to prove it. But you don't have to go through that thanks to feature flags. So feature flags are a common feature of big production applications that allow you to enable or disable features in the application without having to redeploy the app. So when it's on fire, you just turn it off and it happens immediately. It's awesome. Let me tell you, they are a lifesaver. Now, there have been open source projects and vendors in this feature flagging space for years, but integrating feature flag support into your app has always been a bit of a hassle until now. Versal has come out with a new library. It works with Next.js and Svelte, and it makes it easy to define the flags and to use those feature flags in your application. So that's what we're going to do in this video. I'll show you how to set up the feature flags, how to use them, how to configure them from a remote source. We'll do it in production, live, and I'll show you how to use Versal's awesome toolbar to override the flags in your local session so you can see the impact of the flags right away for yourself. So if you want to be a production web engineer and you haven't had experience with feature flags, I know a lot of code schools, I don't think cover these, but they are super valuable in production. You'll want to watch this video completely to familiarize yourself with them. So of course, at the end, I do recommend trying this out for yourself to get experience with it. Let's get right into it. All right, let's start by creating a simple flags Next.js application. We use TypeScript, ESLint, Tailwind, and the source directory, and we're going to use the app router. We'll keep the import alias as is, and then I'll bring that up in VS Code. Of course, as is always the case on this channel, all of this code is available to you for free in a link in the description right down below. Go check that out. Next thing I'm going to do is add the Versal Flags library to our project. To do that, I'll use pmpm add Versal Flags, and then I'm going to define a flag. So in this case, I'm going to define it over in the source directory, create a new file called flags.ts. And I'm going to bring in the unstable flag function and rename it flag from Versal flags next. And then I'm going to use that flag function to define the expensive AI flag. So the idea here is that we've got an application. It has a search function that uses an expensive AI. And by default, we want that off. So we use a cheaper AI instead. I myself think about when I'm deploying an AI based application, I keep myself up at night thinking, ah, if this thing spins out of control, it's going to cost me a lot of money. So I love the idea of being able to enable or disable expensive models like this. But of course, that's just one use for this. You can use flags for anything. You can have it turn on and off visual features. You can have it turn on and off parts of an API. There's all kinds of things that you can do with flags. You can even use the same flag to control mobile parts of the application. You can use a flag to release code that is default turned off, like in this case, the expensive AI stuff, and you can turn it on for a little while, see what the load looks like, and then turn it off again. There's all kinds of things you can do with these flags, but we're just going to create one just to try it out. All right, so I'm just going to do a little bit of visual cleanup before we get into it. I'm going to go over here, set the background to black, and I'm going to go and delete some of the stuff in the CSS. This is just basic cleanup stuff. And then over my page, I'm going to pretty much remove everything. And there we go. And I've got it all pared down. Now I want to go and bring in that expensive AI flag. So I'll bring in the allow expensive AI function, which is created by that flag function. And then we'll use it inside of our home. So we'll then await that to get the value of it. Now this, of course, it needs to be an async function. And that'll put some text in there that says, if we have the expensive AI, then say expensive AI, otherwise cheap AI. This is it for what we're going to do on the UI side. It, this is all about testing out how these flags work. So don't really too excited about any kind of UI that's going to come out of this project. All right, so let's fire it up. All right, so we're defaulting to false. So why is that? Well, if I go over to flags, we can see that our default value is false. We set that to true. And we've also got the decide function. This is what takes the headers and any kind of other input and comes up with what the current value of the flag is. You can use all kinds of information for that. You can use environment variables. You can use external API sources. You can use the headers coming in on the request to find out who this person is and then change the flag based on their identity or their role. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. But let's just go ahead and say that it's going to be true. Hit save. 
So there you go. Now we're on expensive AI. So you can see this is now controlling the behavior of the application based on what we're getting out of this flag. All right, now let's simulate having an external way to set this expensive AI flag. So to do that, I'm going to go back in my terminal. So in this virtual flags directory, I'm going to create a new directory called feature flags. And in there, I'm going to create a new file called flags.json. I'm bringing up Vim and I'm going to drop in there. Expensive AI is true. Now inside this feature flags directory, I'm going to do MPX server. And I'll bring up 8080 and we can see that I got flags.json. And when I look at that, I get that expensive AI is true. I'm going to go take that URL and I'm going to drop that into our app. So over here in our decide, I'm going to fetch that flags.json. I'm going to get the response from that. And then I'm going to return the expensive AI Boolean. All right, let's go take a look. So now we got our expensive AI. Let's go set that to false. So back in Vim again, I'll set that to false. Now, of course, it's still saying expensive AI, but that's because we haven't done a refresh. We have no way of knowing from Next.js's point of view that that flags.json file has changed. But if we hit refresh, we'll see cheap AI because now we're going off, we're deciding that flag state, and then we're getting that flag state back. And that flag state is now false, which gives us the cheap AI. So awesome. So what happens if I try this out in build mode? Well, let's give that a try. So go back over here, stop the terminal. I'll build and start. Now I hit refresh again and we get cheap AI. Now let's go and change that to true. And there you go. So why is that? Well, you'd expect that in a Next.js application that it would be static, but it's not. Let's go take a look. If I scroll back in the build, we can see that the slash route is a dynamic route. And that's because that flags function could potentially use incoming headers, which means it would be dynamic. Now, there is a way to do this statically. I'm not actually going to show that in this video. If you're really interested in that, be sure to drop a line in the comments right down below, and I can cover that in a subsequent video. It is complex, but it is doable, and it is really awesome. All right, so the next thing I want to do is deploy this to production, but obviously it's going to be a problem if we're looking at this localhost 8080 flags.json. So what I did was I created an exact same flags.json file, and I put it up in my own personal S3 bucket. Let's go have a look at that. So over here on S3, we've got the flags.json file, and I've got my transmit loaded up. This is my own local FTP stuff, and I can actually edit in transmit and change that value. So I can do false here, hit save. Now I go back over here, it's false, cool. So now I can actually go and change this externally deployed S3 JSON file, and the production app can then go look at that. So I'm gonna go take that S3 file, and I'm going to go and put that into my code. And that is what I'm going to deploy out to Vercel. All right, now I know we see a lot of missing flags of secret there. We'll get to that in a bit. Let's get it first deployed, and then we'll talk about that flag secret. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to GitHub. And then I'll create a new repo for this. We'll call it simple flags. I'll create that repository. And then we'll go and upload our code, add all existing changes, commit them, add the remote. Push it, and there we go. Okay, so now let's go to Versal and get that deployed. All right, we'll import that, and I'm just going to deploy that. All right, looks like we're good. Let's go to the dashboard and then bring it up. And there we go. It's currently cheap AI. Let's go ahead and change it to expensive AI. Hit save, hit refresh, expensive AI. And it's just that easy. So we're actually changing the behavior of the application with these flags without having to redeploy. How cool is that? All right, now the next thing to do is try out the Versal toolbar. It's going to allow us to override the flags in our local session. So if you're working with your product manager or other engineers, you can basically go and have them just bring up the toolbar, authenticate, and then change the flag that's really, really cool. But before we get into that, I do want to say that my pro Next.js course is just about to come out. It is going to be such great value for the money. You can't believe what's in this thing. It is really fantastic stuff. If you sign up for the newsletter today, so you get notified later about when the course is available, you'll also get access to two free tutorials in that course. One is on state management and the other is on forms management. Both of those are invaluable and they're both free. So go check those out. And of course, once you're on that newsletter, you get notified when the course is out. I can't wait just a few weeks now. All right, so let's try out this toolbar. So back in my VS code, I'm gonna bring in the Versal toolbar library. 
I'm then going to import that into my layout and then use that component in my app. And then one last thing, I need to go over to my next config and then bring in the width versal toolbar. And then I'll use that to wrap my next config. So that is setting up my versal toolbar. Now let's go and bring this up in dev mode. All right, that we get an error message and that error message tells us that we are in development mode, but the configuration is missing. The first thing we need to do is this versal link. So let's link our project to our versal project. It's that easy. Now let's try again. All right, now we're seeing our toolbar. Let's authenticate. Very cool. And now when we click on the feature flags, it's actually going to walk us through the configuration process. So we'll continue. So now we've installed Versal Flags. Cool. Now we need to go and create this well-known Versal Flags route. So I'm going to go and copy out this portion of it. Let's go over here to our app directory, create a new file, paste that in, and that'll create dot well-known Versal Flags. So I'm bringing in our own implementation. Of course, all this code is available to you for free in GitHub and the link in the description right down below. This is a get endpoint. And what's going to happen here is that Versal toolbar is going to call this get endpoint dot well known slash Versal slash flags. And that's what it's going to use to run its UI to allow you to set those flags. So it just needs a list of all the flags. So that's what we get on line four is the list of all the flags. We get this get provider data on line two from flags next. And then we use that to return on line 13 some JSON output that has the current value of all of those flags. And then on line 10 and 11, we check to make sure that you're logged in. All right, let's hit save. And there we go. It's found that route rate. I've set up the overrides. They're done automatically by the Versal Next installation. Now we need to generate the environment variable. That is actually going to set that flag secret. We continue. Now we need to pull that value back in. So to do that, because we're linked, we can do Versal end pull. I'll do Versal end pull and then run again. All right, looks good. And now we bring up our feature flags and holy moly, there it is, our expensive AI. And so it is currently set to true. So let's apply false. There it is, cheap AI, awesome. And so now we're overriding this locally, so we can set that back to true. Let's now go and set our external one to false. So now it should be cheap AI externally. And we'll go and apply that. Okay, cool. Now we're defaulting back to the cheap AI. And I can then go and override that to true. That is just, that is so cool. So imagine having all of these flags and the ability to locally override these in dev mode, and that even works in production mode. Let's go give it a try. All right, so back in our terminal, I'll add my changes one more time and commit it. And I'll push production, take a look at deployments. All right, that's deployed, let's give it a try. If I hit refresh, I'll get my toolbar. So cool, this is awesome, look at that. I'll upgrade my AI. Oh, that is awesome. That is just so, so great. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at the new Versal Flags library. I think it's a pretty well factored library and it allows you to do the flag stuff without any kind of Versal stuff if you want. It just provides the infrastructure of flag handling inside of your Next.js application and does it seamlessly and it does it well. But if you wanna use the Versal stuff to add on some additional coolness like this toolbar that's there for you as well so i think that's that's quite nice all right in the meantime if you have any questions or comments about this i'll do my best to answer them in the comment section right down below just leave a comment right there and if you would if you like this video hit that like button and if you really like the video hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out